Good morning from me and the ducks. <laughs> Welcome to Origination Overload. Today I'm going to be talking about structuring songs. This can be a difficult thing to do when you start out, especially turning those eight bar loop ideas into complete songs. So today I'll share with you some ideas, techniques and examples to structure your songs. I'll first talk a little bit about song structure, then I'll visually show you some song structures that you can use. Thirdly, I'll walk through a track with you and show you the various parts of it and how it flows together. Afterwards, I'll show you how I take an 8 bar loop idea and turn it into a structured song. Music models mean songs are either taking you on a musical journey, making you dance, or telling a story with emotion. Structure is the way a song is sectioned. What's pleasant about music is that it has a sense of rhythm and flow. There is enough repetition that keeps the listener engaged and enough variation that surprises and delights. Too much unity in music is boring and too much variety is crazy. So structure is the way a song finds that balance. <laughs> Looks like I'm milking something. <laughs> Now that we know the song is going to have various sections, we should conceptualize what they could be. Song structuring has to do with the way you arrange the various sections of your song. The following song structure works for many genres such as synth pop, EBM, industrial, dubstep. The main concept is that everything leads to and builds up towards your chorus. Your chorus is your main hook or your main melody line. It's the part of the song you want people to sing along to, and it's generally the part of the song that has the most energy. The verse will generally tell a story or it will be a bit more low energy, and the break will be either a build up or break down. It could even be the part of the song where you musically show off with the lead or, or possibly try something different. There's various ways to think about these different sections. It depends what school you come from and what the goal of your song is. For example, if you're making dance music, you might want to consider the intro and outro as a simplified beat for DJs to mix the song in and out with. Maybe instead of thinking of your sections as a verse and a chorus, you could think of them as your main drop or your hook. Or maybe you want to think of it in a more musical sense, that the verse is where you play your minor chords and you play riffs and your chorus is where you'll play major chords and you'll play your melodies and possibly your middle eight section is where you do a lead. In the end what matters most is that these sections sound like they flow into each other naturally and that they are able to flow back into each other. When you start structuring your songs I recommend trying to stick to 16 bars. Maybe you can make your choruses and your breakdown sections eight bars but generally try to keep everything mathematically the same. When you start to get more technical, you'll be able to start adding one or two bar build up or breakdowns in between your various sections. Hey guys, welcome to Origination Overload. Today I'm going to walk through this track with you and show you the various parts of the song and show you how it's structured. The whole song is built around this verse section and the chorus section, what's different about it is that it has a few more pads, it has a few chords, and basically, it has a few more percussion and drums. The breakdown sections over here and the middle sections are basically just variations again of the verse section. Let me play the song.
okay you get the idea then basically the chorus goes again it goes into this little break section um, the only other real section which is quite different is this little middle section where it goes into a bit more break beats <laughs> Yeah, back into the chorus so as you can see there's two verses and the chorus plays four times there's also four little breakdowns yeah i hope that gave you some ideas next i'm going to show you how i take an eight bar loop and turn it into a complete song so let me play you what i've got so far kick click for my kick Snare. It's a little hi hat sprinkle. It's a percussion. Okay, we've got the bass off. We've got a mid off. Got a high off. String. We've got these long songs. We've got some guitar riff. Some melody. That's what it all sounds like together. So my suggestion to writing music is to try make an 8 bar or 16 bar loop and try build it up as much as you can. Try layer as many sounds on top of each other as you can. So your beat, your riff, your bass line, your melody, pads, whatever you can. Now the idea is you need to unpack this 8 bar loop and make it at least into a 16 bar loop. So I'm going to select everything, hold down Alt, and drag it. Okay, so now I've got a 16 bar loop. But playing this over and over again is gonna get pretty monotonous. So the idea is you need to try create a B section or a verse section or a chorus section, whatever you wanna call it. It just needs to be a different section to your first section and the energy should either be going up or down and they should be able to loop into each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the beats, I'm going to copy the beat over, and I'm just going to work with the bass line for now and change the bass line up a bit. Okay, so this is the section we already have. I'll make a new section here. Let's take a look at this bass line. So this is it without the arp. with the up. Okay, but let's see if that flows into each other. Just the beats and the bass line. That kind of works. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut off half above the end of this beat just so that it has more impact when it comes back up. And I'm going to, because the bass line definitely has less energy. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove some of this percussion to lessen the energy even more. And I'm going to copy the mid op, but I'm going to take it off the op. And this is what we got. Okay, 
so the baseline probably also needs to go away just so it has more impact when it drops. I think I'm gonna put a snare over there. So the trick is you definitely want your two sections to be able to flow into each other pretty smoothly. And the same thing when they loop back, you want them to be able, you want it to be able to sound pretty natural. no impact so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some variations on the snares maybe some variations on the kick let's take a look let's remove that okay it's a good idea to color your stuff so you know that there's something different about it. Okay, so this is what we got again. Sound, but it probably needs a shorter release and duplicate it. Check out the sustain, probably. Quite like that reverb, so I think I'm just gonna duplicate some of these. And join this, Control J, select everything, and make the length a bit smaller. Okay, what I want to do is take all these. of his first hits and delete them and I'm just gonna keep them in this one and I'm gonna put the reverb on Okay, that kind of works. So I'm going to go through some of the other sounds I've got in this first section and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to move them to the second section, the B section, and I'm going to alter them a bit. So they're not just doing something different with the melody or the riff, it's also got a different effect on it. What I like to do is duplicate them and add different effects to them as well. Like for example, this guitar riff, let's see. Maybe even if we just put it up an octave or down an octave. Okay. In which case,
case, I think some distortion. I mean, the energy is quite low in the second section, so that might even end up being the verse of the song or the beginning of the song. So maybe the song actually starts here. Sounds a bit better. So what I did was I copied the pads, um, I put them an octave lower, I removed the reverb, um, made the chorus stronger, and changed the delay. So it's just the slight difference if you hear. This is the pad, going into the pad in the second section. A lot more metallic. Anyways, let's just remove a little bit of the end of it here. So as you can start to hear, it's starting to, start, starting to sound like it's getting somewhere. If you really want to be gangs though, instead of repeating the same pattern and just copying it to your second section, you should actually change it and maybe put it in a different key or change the pattern of it. Instead of just copying the pattern from the first section, what you should try to do is alter it, maybe put it in a different key, maybe change it up a bit, uh, because the song might get a bit monotonous with the same pattern kind of repeating all the time. So now that I've got the main sections, so now you can ask yourself what is the verse, what is the chorus, um, which part is going to go first, do you want the song to start low energy or high energy, how is the song progressing. I think in this case I'm probably going to start with this section here and then progress into this first section. So, what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to move this around, take this section, this first section, put it behind the second section. So now that you've got these two sections, the idea is you kind of need to unpack them and let them build up slowly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start taking some of the sounds and pushing them over to the left. Move some hats. Okay, and then I'll slowly start introducing some of the sounds. 
every eight balls or so. Okay, so this first section here is going to be your intro which leads up into your first drop or your main section, depends how you want to look at it, which leads into your chorus or your, or your hook and then it goes back to the first section, right? So now this following section what I recommend you do is you have this as a breakdown. This is kind of where the song breathes or deconstructs quite a bit. And then all you're going to do is you're basically going to loop it back into this, <clears throat> into these three sections. So now we're going to try to find a nice smooth transition. I'm just going to remove the ends of these pads. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these little drum variations over here. So now... Okay, without the kick, I think. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a very simple drum build up in the section just to give it some space, just to create some tension. Redrum, reset it. Let's find a simple snare. And then another one. Okay. And then I'm just going to do edit automation, right click, edit automation, create this new lane. Take the pen tool, draw, draw this, double click, and then draw a little curve here. Oops. Okay, I'm just going to grab some samples for that break section. And what also really helps to make your songs sound professional is to add some effects. Okay, so I browsed for some effects and I got some voice samples to add to the break of the song. So the effect is just the long white noise, um, which builds up into the break. Thank you. 
going to remove the end of this. Real, real. Okay, what also helps to make a song sound uh, have more impact or professional is some crashes, or some effects. Um, introducing the new sections. Okay, so I've added this kick, added this kick with a reverb on it, just for the breakdown section, I'm just going to add, um, add a crash or a cymbal. Okay, so now I've got these sections, right? So just to run, okay, just to run over through this again, I started with this section over here, this first section. I laid as many sounds as I could on top of each other. I then duplicated it into this section and basically deconstructed it a bit, um, made it more minimal and duplicated some of the sounds added some effects to them and just changed them slightly. And the same thing on this side, the intro, I took some of the sounds and let them build up gradually. This breakdown section also comes from this first section, the first section I made. It's again, just the variation of it, more minimal. And again, the whole idea is you want your first section to be able to loop into itself. You want it to be able to loop into your second section. The, this section here must make sense. And if you loop back into your verse, it needs to make sense. Once everything starts to work with each other, you can change them around and put them in different places. So basically the song is just gonna repeat. So I'm just gonna copy this section and I'm gonna move it over here. So that's these three, and then the song will end. Okay, and that's how you turn an 8-bar loop into a 4-minute song. Okay, I'm just going to add some effects over here.
big boss. She turns over to her, peels off the orange pants, spreads her legs real wide, and says to me, Take a bite. Yeah, and you might want to give it some slight variations, maybe as the song progresses you add more sounds to it, maybe some more percussion, maybe just change it slightly. You don't want it to become too boring and monotonous for the listener. So if you want to be really gangster, what you should do for your second sections is you shouldn't just duplicate the patterns like I did here into these sections. You should probably change them, put them in a different key, maybe change the pattern up a bit to make it more interesting. But I hope that gave you a basic idea of how to take a simple loop and turn it into a song. If you enjoyed that, please like and subscribe. Thanks, bye. Origination Overload.